Hi, I'm Kristen Amdahl and welcome back to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for making the Vega Crochet Mobius. This is a relaxing Zen project that creates a gorgeous lace fabric. It is simple to crochet in an easy to memorize stitch pattern. The Mobius has worked flat in rows before the fabric is twisted and sewn into a tube. This lacy broomstick lace fabric would also make a fabulous scarf or wrap if left unsewn. You will need one ball of Biso Toasty yarn, which is a number one fingering weight yarn that is a blend of superwash merino wool and bamboo shown in color cactus flower. You'll also need a G6 or four millimeter crochet hook, a US 50 or 25 millimeter knitting needle, or a dowel around the same size, yarn needle and scissors. For row one of the Vega Mobius cowl pattern, we're going to start with foundation single crochet. Now, if you're just doing any broomstick lace project, you're going to learn how to do broomstick lace in this video. You can start with a chain and a row of single crochet if you want, but for this pattern I felt like foundation single crochet looked prettier for joining the two sides of the fabric together. So we're going to start with foundation single crochet, and if you haven't done this before, it's a really cool technique as well. It combines the chain and the single crochet rows at the same time and giving you a stretchier body than you would have if you were just doing a chain first and then a row of single crochet. So we start with a chain two, then you're going to insert your crochet hook into that second chain from your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two. So the chain two counted as our first foundation single crochet, and then that was our second foundation single crochet. Now I'm going to grab a yarn needle so I can point out where we're gonna work our next stitch. So here's that first chain, and then you see there's that vertical bar here underneath the stitch that I just made. That vertical bar is the, found, is the chain portion of the stitch that we just made. So that's where we're going to work our next stitch. So you're gonna insert your hook into that vertical bar, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one loop on your hook, and yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook. If you're paying attention and being mindful as you crochet, it's that yarn over, pull through one loop on your hook that creates that vertical bar, and that's the place where we're going to work our next foundation single crochet. So it's insert your hook in that next bar, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one loop on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook. And you want to continue doing this until you've done the correct number of stitches for the Vega crochet Mobius cowl pattern, or if you're making this, if you're modifying this in any way to make it longer, shorter, wider, narrower, what have you, you want to make sure that for this particular pattern of broomstick crochet, we're going to be doing a multiple of five stitches. So you want these foundation single crochets to be a multiple of five. Okay, so as you can see, this is a reduced size sample. I did 20 stitches, but you would want to do whatever size you're trying to make for the Mobius. It's 75 stitches if you're doing the Vega cowl exactly as written. So we have 20 stitches here, which is a different multiple of five, and now we're ready to put those stitches, to pull up loops in each of those stitches and place them on the larger dowel or large uh, knitting needle to make those long loops of the broomstick lace. So we're going to start by taking the working loop on our yarn and elongating it and placing it over here on the knitting needle. Now if you're doing this in your lap, you can, in, you can put the knitting needle in between your legs and stand it up vertically. I'm going to try to do it a little, little flatter here for the video so that you can see the stitches a little closer, but it is easier to place this in your lap when you're working by yourself. So I inserted my crochet hook into the next stitch and I'm going to pull up a loop and slide it onto the next plot space on the knitting needle. Mm -hmm. And then just working along, now working backwards along the row, we're going to insert our crochet hook into the next stitch pull up a loop and elongate that loop and place it onto the knitting needle. And so you want to be mindful as you're doing this to make sure that the stitches are not tight but that they are taut. You want to make sure that each one 
is roughly the same tension on here. Like if you notice that like this one was a little bit loose, you would wanna go back, kind of like when you're tightening up shoelaces, you have to start from where you're at and then gradually go back to tighten it up. Okay, so we'll move on to the next stitch here. And you also wanna make sure that you're not placing those stitches on the tapered edge, because obviously that tapered edge has a smaller circumference than the rest of the knitting needle, so you wouldn't be getting uniform size loops either. Okay, you wanna do this all the way across until you have a loop on the knitting needle for every number of stitches that you made in the previous row. Our stitch count should be the same at the end of every single row. Okay, once you have all the stitches picked up and have all of those loops on the knitting needle, there are two different ways that you can take the loops off to crochet into them. Like I said earlier, we're going to maintain the same stitch count at the beginning and end of each row, but when we're pulling off these loops, let me show you on the finished fabric, we're pulling them off in groups of five so that we can create these cluster stitches. And how we do that, yeah, well, you can do it in two different ways. And there are pluses and minuses to both ways of doing it. And I'll explain why it might be a good idea to do it either way, depending on what's going on in your life at that point. If you are going to be able to sit in the same spot and work on it without any distractions for the whole row, so what is that? You know, however many minutes you think it's gonna take you to work across the row, you can literally slide all of the loops off all at one time, believe it or not, and work into it working flat on a table. If that is not practical for you, if you think you're going to have to get up or get distracted, or if you don't have a table and you're doing this out of your lap, you can also pull them off in the sections of how we're going to be crocheting. So for this pattern, that would be pulling them off in sections of five at a time. So I'm gonna show you both ways. So we'll start by just pulling off the first five loops at one time. So what I'll do is take them down to the tapered section where you have a little bit of room and insert my crochet hook into those first five stitches and then pull them off the knitting needle and now they are on the crochet hook instead. Then find my working yarn not your tail, and you're going to stretch it up to create a loop through all five of those stitches and try to, you know, try to approximate the length of those elongated loops. Then work a chain one, and now working into all five loops at the same time, we're going to work five single crochets in those five loops, and that's how we maintain the same stitch count throughout. So if you pull five loops, you work five single crochets in them. If you were gonna try and, try and do this in a different stitch pattern, you could pull up loops, pull up, do this in groups of six or in three, whatever. And if you're pulling three loops, you would work three single crochets in them. If you're pulling six loops, you would do six single crochets in them. For this pattern, we're doing loops, groups of five loops at a time, and therefore working five single crochets together in those five loops. Now, like I said, you could do it pulling off each cluster at a time, or if you think you can sit in the same spot at one time and not have any distractions, you can literally pull them all off together. How fun is that? Looks like it's a naughty thing to do, but it really isn't. <laughs> and then we'll grab the next five stitches, or the next five loops, insert your crochet hook into all five of them together, and then work five single crochets into all five of those loops together as well. And then we'll pull the next five loops. And work one single crochet five times into all five of those loops together. And you'll repeat that all the way across. If for some reason you have lost your count across the row and at the end of the row, let's say you only had four loops left, if there is really nothing else standing out to you and you don't wanna go back and unravel, the best way that you could get your stitch count back to where it's supposed to be is even if you only had four loops here, just work the five single crochets into it anyway. You want it, It's important that you have that correct stitch count at the end of the row. So at this point, we've got five, four sets of five, so 20 stitches is what I started with. I'm ready to start my next row. And the amazing part of this pattern is that 
this is it. <laughs> Everything you need to know, you've already learned for this, which is amazing that the repeat is that short. So let me show you how we just work the next repeat of the pattern. We're going to grab our knitting needle again, elongate that first stitch, and slide it back onto the knitting needle. Notice that we're not turning our work either. The front of our work is going to be facing us the whole time for this project. And again, if you were doing this uh, and you were not comfortable do, picking up these loops and placing them on the knitting needle at the table. You could definitely do this in your lap instead. You could, see, if you're sitting like uh, crisscross applesauce, you could actually put it between your ankle and your leg. And if you were sitting straight up in a chair, you could place it between your thighs or place it between your knees. There's, I've seen people place it in between their body and their elbow or body and their arm, like underneath their armpit area. You can secure it that way as well, whatever's comfortable for you. But if you like using the table, you can definitely do that as well. And so you can see we're just going to work our way backwards now, working in each stitch, insert the crochet hook into the stitch, elongate the working loop, and slide it over onto the knitting needle. So you want to repeat these two rows until your project is the desired length. The pattern will tell you how long to do it for the Mobius, and I believe it's 40 inches. And that is a blocked measurement, so you would want to do a gauge swatch first because you can see how much different this is going to look from the unblocked to the blocked measurement once it uh, reacts to water. It's going to grow quite a bit. And then I wanted to show you how simple it is to turn this flat fabric, which by the way would be gorgeous as, it's, uh, as it is right now, or you, I can show you how to turn this into a Mobius cowl. And that's by folding the whole thing in half. We have a tube right now. If you wanted to sew this seam up at this point, you would have a straight cowl. But to make it into a Mobius, we do one quick flip of one side, and so now we can take, after that one twist, we can take our row one of the foundation single crochet and our last row of the project, and we can slip stitch these two rows together. You could either sew them together if you prefer that, to do that with a sewing needle or a yarn needle and the tail. I made my tail extra long so that I could do this uh, with the tail instead of having to cut another piece of yarn. And I'm going to just insert my hook into the first stitch as it presents itself in both the last row of the work and the first row of the work and slip stitch through both thicknesses. Then I'll go on to the next stitch on both rows, insert the crochet hook into both, and then slip stitch both of them together. I'm not going to do these slip stitches very tightly because I don't want to tighten up this row. I want it to be nice and loose across the cowl. So I'm just going to try to be pretty relaxed about it and just insert the crochet hook in the next stitch and in the free loop of the foundation single crochet row at the beginning and just slip stitch both of those stitches together. And you want to repeat this all the way across. Follow the link in the video description to download the Vega Mobius Cowl pattern that includes charts and written instructions. And you can also find information on browsing all of my gorgeous hand-dyed colors and shopping for Be So Toasty Yarn, which is my number one fingering weight merino wool and bamboo blended yarn. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all about anything we talked about in this video, please leave them for me in the comments. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you in the next video.